Hey kids, and welcome to another tutorial video for SimCity 4 on Rob's Red Hot Spot. Last video, I went through the first steps to building a city or a, and a brand new region map. So things like place your power plants, give them water, that's over here, give them water, uh, give them uh, garbage disposal services, put down your zones, make sure things like dirty coal plants are away from where your sims are going to be living, etc. Uh, I also talked about a number of uh, really important concepts to understand how this game works. Uh, it might seem like uh, a lot of information to take in at first, especially if you're really new to the game, uh, and that's normal. I wanted to illustrate those concepts in broad strokes, and as we get more into the nitty-gritty of how the game works and we cover more aspects of it, you'll, you'll have a clearer understanding of how they work. So let's recap quickly the, the, the three most important concepts we went through last episode. Uh, just to make sure we understand. So it's important to understand the difference between these three. Desirability, demand, and demand cap. They, they're, it's easy to confuse them, right? So what's demand? Demand is the total amount of demands for various types of jobs or wealth levels of residents in the city tile. So for the whole city tile, and it also includes some demand from neighboring cities, but I'm not going to get into neighbor cities until uh, an, uh, another episode, so we're just going to focus on this one city tile. So if I zoom out here, we can see the whole tile. We're just going to focus on this one city tile that, that is active right now. So it's the total amount of demand for various types of jobs, wealth levels, residents in the city tile. So, so demand is created when you have, if you have too many jobs, you're going to have demand for residents. If you have too many residents, you're going to have demand for jobs, jobs being commercial and industrial, right? Okay, so what's a demand cap? A demand cap is a limit placed by the game mechanics on the maximum population of residents. So if we go here, we can see jobs and pop. The maximum population of residents of a given type of jobs or a given type of uh, residents that a specific city will support. So demand caps can be raised in a variety of ways, which we're going to talk about a bit in this episode and also in the episode on regional, regional play in SimCity 4. So that's a recap of demand and demand caps. And so where does desirability come into this? Desirability is sort of the local uh, qualities that make different wealth level of residents live in a certain area of your city or different types of jobs want to set up shop in certain areas of your cities, right? So keep in mind that demand is not local. Demand is, uh, demand is for the whole city tile, whereas desirability is is local areas within the city tile and where people want to set up. Uh, in order to get your city to develop, you're going to need desirable areas for things to develop as well as demand for those things, right? So if a zone won't develop, it's because the area isn't desirable enough, because there's not enough demand for that type of zone, or because you've hit a demand cap. So in this video, we're going to talk about desirability factors, uh, which are these things here desirability factors that contribute towards making a given area desirable for certain types of uh, sims or jobs, and how you can provide the services and infrastructures to make areas of the city more desirable without going bankrupt. We're also going to look at how you can create demand for more desirable types of development. So when we go back here, obviously the more desirable types of development are going to be things like uh, high wealth commercial services, commercial office, high tech industry, high wealth sims, high wealth residential in other words. Uh, so you're going to have to create the conditions to make those to make those folks want to move into the city. Uh, and we're also going to look into how you can create demand for, for those more desirable types of development. And they're, they're, they intersect. They, one plays off the other. So as you, as you make your city more desirable, you attract certain things, and that creates demand for other more desirable things, right? But it all costs money. So we can't just go, we can't just go here and look at these schools and place like elementary school, high school, library, college. We can't give them everything at once, right? We have to, we have to t be a little bit strategic and, uh, you know, plan, plan out how we do that so that we don't go bankrupt in the process of trying to make a nicer city. So, uh, it, by the way, if you want to skip ahead at any point in, in these videos, I've put uh, a timestamps in the, the video description, and I'll label them with uh, the sort of subsections of each tutorial video, and I've done that for the first video as well, so it should be fairly easy to navigate if you want to skip ahead because you feel like you've, I'm covering something that you already understand, or if you want to go to a specific topic or whatever, that's, that's great, that's why I put the timestamps there. 
so before we before we get into because uh, I want to show you basically what order I think you should, what order of priorities you should have with a young city in terms of what services you offer and, and what kinds of desirability factors you offer. But before we do that, let's just quickly go over the various desirability factors for, for residential, commercial, and industry. So it's pretty, you can get a pretty good sense of it in the query uh, window that pops up when we click on one of these apartment buildings or any, any building. So we can see that pollution is up there. Uh, so the lower the pollution, the more desirable it will be for richer Sims. Garbage is up there as well. So garbage is really, really important. And that's like in the last video, what I, you know, I was talking about making sure that your power plant is over here and making sure that your garbage is over there. You also have to make sure that you have garbage disposal. If garbage is building up in the streets, and it's funny because it's very hard to see, you have to sort of zoom in. If there's garbage building up in the street, you have to zoom in to see it graphically on the map. Uh, or you can look as well. There's a data view here, uh, garbage, and we can see that there's no garbage showing, right? And then we can see that all the garbage, that's green. There would be red over here if there was garbage in the streets. So it's easy to forget and you're like, well, why, why won't, why won't the rich people move in? And it's because, well, because there's garbage in the streets. Like you've given them schools, you've given them uh, hospitals and everything. So do remember garbage and obviously water. Uh, so those are the, but those are the, the first two, right? Pollution and garbage. Uh, school grade. School grade is uh, is really important, and I'm going to dive into that soon. And that you obviously increase their school grade through building schools, hospital grade. You increase them by providing them healthcare. Uh, crime. You need police coverage. Traffic noise has to do with how much traffic is on the street. So we'll talk more about traffic in the episode on transportation. I am going to be overlooking transportation as a desirability factor in this video. Uh, I'm, which I'm not saying it's not important. Uh, it is important, but I'm going to do a whole video just on transportation because it, it just it needs its own video. Same thing with commute time. Commute time is related to transportation. We'll talk about that in the next episode. So that gives you a quick overview of the desirability factors for residential. I have a similar bunch here for um, for commercial. So pollution, garbage crime and customers. Customers is related to traffic, once again. The more traffic you have in an area, the more customers you have. Uh, crime is police, uh, garbage is the same as for residential. And then over here, for the industry, it's pollution, garbage, crime, and freight trips. Freight trips has to do with how long it takes for freight to get off the map. Industrial areas are more desirable when they're built close to access off the map. I've actually removed, I put an access there in the last episode, I've removed it just to kind of demonstrate some things in this episode. But yeah, so that's, that is interesting. Uh, so uh, one of the things you're gonna notice right away is that residential zones have the most desirability factors. There are the more, most things that are, that are influencing them. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. Remember, uh, your, you don't need to have schools in your commercial zones, right? Because the workers live in, at home, they go to school and they go to work, it's like a separate thing. So residential zones as a result are in many ways the most expensive zones to maintain. That's just an idea I want you to keep in your head. Uh, now, bef now we're going to dive into how to make a city like this which has got dirty industry and poor sims and kind of crummy retail, how to make it into a more affluent city. So why, why do we want to make this city a nicer place? Well, to be honest, you don't have to. You can play the game any way you want. Why do you want to make the city a nice place? Well, there's one reason that is kind of financial in nature, and that is that, let's say, if I, if I keep developing here and I, I max out this industrial zone, right? Let's give the industrial zone water. Okay, let's give everything water at this point. Uh, so right away, right away we can see a problem that just occurred. Okay, so dirty industry brings in a lot of money. You can see we're making a profit here. Dirty industry brings in a lot of money. But dirty industry, uh, if you look at the different industrial types, dirty manufacturing and high tech, dirty industry consumes a lot of water and it consumes a lot of power. So not only does it pollute your city, but it consumes a ton of water and a ton of power. So this power plant here, it's not at capacity yet, but if we build up industry, it will very, very quickly be at capacity. And already we're finding ourselves having to provide another water plant, right? So let's click now. Now that we've given them water, the, the in industrial zones will develop more, right? 
and we can see right away I just I, I put the clock forward for about a month and we're already out of water again those little water zots mean we're out of water All right so you can see that the industrial zone expands and the income it provides from expanding which is the month we're going to be looking at the budget screen a lot more this episode and I'm not going to go over it exhaustively because it's pretty self-evident but uh, you know when we're looking at the taxes we can open up the tax details we can see that you know dirty industry is a big source of taxes for this city the other source of taxes is low wealth residential right you can see that it provides a, a you know a nice chunk of taxes but every time it goes up by like a hundred dollars or so we're having to build another we're having to build another water plant so it very very quickly will eat that up and as it eats up our power capacity it's already almost doubled from the last time I checked how much power it's using uh, basically dirty industry barely pays for itself in terms of the cost of providing water and power so it's very hard to get a very rich city one that's able to afford fancy highways and rail lines and all that or say cleaner power plants and other things it's very hard to get a very rich city when you're relying only on dirty industry because it, it produces the lowest tax income of the three categories of industry it and it causes it consumes a huge amount of power it consumes a huge amount of water and it's just very inefficient and it also causes a lot of pollution so that's one of the big reasons why we want to get a healthier city faster is that it's hard to get rich using dirty industry so we can continue we could continue to grow the dirty industry here more certainly until we kind of hit some hit some problems but one of the things that we'll run into as well is water pollution if we look at the pollution maps here air pollution we can see the air pollution is already pretty big this air pollution here is caused by traffic whereas this this air pollution is caused by the industry itself and the power plant it's also going to start to cause water pollution so you can see that water pollution is getting pretty bad and water pollution will very very quickly uh, reduce the amount of drinking water we have and it's just and, and water pollution plants if we were to try and clean this water uh, it's gonna cost us 15 grand to build the bloody thing and then it's going to cost us 350 per month to maintain it so it just maintaining a completely dirty industry city the costs really stack up and you're unable to offer your sims anything else you start building parks you start doing things like that you're, you you can you can go bankrupt just by the cost of the utilities so if we're, we're trying to make the city we're trying to make the city a nicer place uh, but uh, you know what's next what do we do first so I want to point out that there's no magic recipe for building the perfect city SimCity 4 is a very complex simulator and there's many routes to solving problems in the game so depending on what kind of city you want to build you, you, you might want to do things differently uh, so you might not agree with what I'm what, what I'm gonna suggest but this is this is the way that I do things and hopefully it will help some some give some good ideas at least for beginning players uh, or long-term players who are trying to solve particular problems. So the first step, in my opinion, of all those desirati uh, desirability factors that we looked at, the first, the, the one that you should consider doing first is education. And there's a couple reasons for that. We can plop down a school, and as we start, if we look at education, we can look at education here, right? And that's not going to give us very much information. It's all red because there's no education in this city. We can also look at education in the graphs mode, which is here. And we can see that education is pretty much rock bottom, right? Now, SimCity is... In SimCity, education takes a long time to take, it, take effect. Sims don't become educated the second a school is built nearby, okay? So, Sims in this game they send their kids to school and those kids come out a few years later with a higher level of education and they're looking for manufacturing jobs and things like that so it's not instant and that's one of the reasons I would recommend building schools first uh, is that they take it takes time for them to actually take effect in the game It can take five ten years before you really start to see the effects of that school we just dropped down and we'll look at that in a second so you're going to want to build your first primary school or elementary school or grammar school depending on whether you live in the US or the UK as early as you can afford to However, I want to give a, issue a little bit of a warning here. I do not advise you to build a complete school system from the start. 
at least not when you're first starting out. So we're not going to build a high school and then a library and then a museum and then a city college right away. First of all, there's no way we can afford it. Uh, even though we're making 700 a month here, there's no way that we can afford to do that. Uh, and second of all, it just, it's not, it's, it's, it's going to make it more difficult to build a city, a larger city, quickly. Uh, so yeah, you'll go bankrupt and the higher, and the other thing is that the, the very highly educated Sims will, will, like, they'll probably just, they probably just move elsewhere because your city doesn't have any good jobs to offer them, right? So you don't want to you don't want to dump a bunch of education really quickly into your city unless you're prepared to provide them with the jobs that they need. Because in your city is also going to have poor health care. It's not going to have good transit. It's not going to have good parks and all of the other things that cities need to to develop. Uh, so so basically, build build your first school. First, build it before you build your first hospital or whatever, but don't just dump in high schools and everything all at once because you, you need to you need to do other things before those those are actually going to produce really good results. Uh, another thing I want to point out is is so when we when we use the query tool on the school, we're, there's two things we can see local funding here and local bus funding. What I would recommend is that you put the local bus funding to zero when you drop your first school. Put it to zero and put the maximum local funding probably to the maximum okay and then I'm gonna recommend that you run the clock all right we can see right away some nicer houses built right there just because of the school that's a desirability factor you can see right away okay 189 out of 550 so now we can start to play around we can we can increase the bus funding and see ah well maybe can this school support the entire go away we can this school support the entire neighborhood maybe yeah, so it can support this, right? But basically, if if you want to be able to provide other, so you can see that our budget here, with maxing both the bus budget and the local funding out, we 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 only have 500 to spare now, right? So, if we want to give them healthcare, if we want to give them other things, we might not be able to provide schooling evenly to all to to all the Sims, right? So it might it's probably a better idea to reduce the bus funding. To put a little bit less bus funding and a little bit less funding and not necessarily offer education to absolutely everyone in your city all at once and that's going to allow you to provide other services and to kind of have a holistic approach to making the city better and the same thing the same thing applies to hospitals so I'm gonna recommend we can we're looking at our budget here and we, we see okay we've still got budget to spare right I'm gonna recommend you put down say a medical clinic could be a hospital, but let's let's use a medical clinic just to follow, kind of follow this start small and get larger. And I'm going to recommend you do the same thing. You know, turn the ambulance funding down, turn this funding up, press play, and see just how much that clinic can support. And you can see that we can afford we can afford this clinic uh, can provide healthcare to this radius, but but not not much more. We might be able to increase the funding a little bit here. You know, but but not much more. So first of all, another thing to do with the school, with schools and um, with schools and hospitals, is the last thing you want to be doing when the city is this young and when you don't have, you know, medium or manufacturing industry and high tech industry. The last thing you want to be doing is zoning dense. And why don't we want to be zoning dense early on? Well, because if we look at this the radius and the capacity of this school, if we look at the radius and capacity of this clinic, even at the smallest, if we were to zone all of this dense, even at the smallest radius, we probably would not be able to provide enough health care and education. So we would have to put the school off to the side or we would have to, you know, basically we would be able to offer a much, much smaller proportion for the same budget. Or we would have to put two schools or two clinics. So. You know, once you're more comfortable with the game, you can you can zone a little bit faster and stuff like that. But when you're first building, when you're first building your first couple cities, uh, start medium density. You shouldn't go any higher than medium density. In fact, medium is probably the best. If you build low density residential, the problem is that to cover to offer say 377 students education, you're going to be putting the bus funding like that, right? So 
it, medium medium density is is the ideal density for early game residential resident, residential construction. So so we've got we've now got two we've got a small school and a small clinic. They're not providing healthcare and education to the entire population, but they are providing it to uh, part of the population. So so that's we're we're on our way to having a nicer city. Let's talk about the next the next form of the next desirability factor. So we've gone through pollution, garbage, school, and hospital. Let's talk about crime. So crime is an interesting one because small cities are fairly tolerant of crime. Crime does not tend to get high until the city gets a lot bigger and denser. Uh, one one area that really doesn't like crime is the commercial zone. So we could put a small police station down. It's probably not necessary. I would say if there's one thing you can put off in the three that I've just gone through, it's probably crime. If you are going to place a small police station, I would say, you know, you don't need to have every single residential area covered by it right at the start. You don't need to have industrial areas covered by it until you want to get high tech industry. But it's not a bad idea to put one in your commercial zone because that might just provide a little boost that will allow, say, some of this uh, some of this medium wealth commercial to build up. Let's talk about the uh, let's talk about uh, pollution a bit more uh, because we we haven't really done anything to tackle pollution, right? We've got this dirty coal plant, we've got this uh, this dirty industry. So a couple things I would say: don't try and don't try and de don't try and solve your pollution problem right away. If you get rid of these polluting industries and try and replace them with manufacturing, you can see here we've still got lots of demand for dirty industry, right? Uh, even when that demand starts to go down or even goes into the negative, we've got to be very careful about deleting dirty industry to wait for the manufacturing because in the meantime, none of these people are going to have jobs and you're going to lose a lot of tax revenue. Uh, and uh, you certainly should not... Uh, you certainly should not uh, try and get rid of your dirty power plants. That's a terrible idea in a young city because these, the, the solar power plant, the new, even if the, you have these unlocked, they unlock pretty quickly, but the gas power plants, the solar power plant, the nuclear power plant, and even the oil power plant are so much more expensive that they will prevent you from offering these services. So if we were using an oil power plant instead of a coal power plant, we would not be able to afford a clinic, a school, a police station. We also have a fire station on this map, right? So yeah, don't try and get rid of uh, dirty industry because your sims will have nowhere to work. Wait until they're educated and wait until they have there's other alternatives and don't try and upgrade your power plants um, until much later. Uh, we'll talk about transportation next episode, but for now, just don't build expensive transportation infrastructure, if I'm gonna say one thing for now, uh, and zone commercial areas where you have traffic, right? So before you start building highways and rail and all that, you can start by trying to absorb some of the traffic with these commercial zones. Uh, one thing, if you do want to do a little bit of pollution mitigation in the early in the early game before you have a lot of money to play with, let's see our budget. Yeah, if you want to do a little bit of pollution mitigation, you can do something like create a buffer zone. And you create a buffer zone the cheap using the cheapest park, which is the open grass area or the open paved area, either one, doesn't matter which one you choose to use, they, they cost the same. So we could create a buffer zone like that, and even that's probably going to be pretty expensive, that's a lot of tiles, right? And if you can't afford that, then don't build it, you can also plant trees. Trees actually reduce air pollution, so if we plant a, a thick grove of trees here, they take a while to grow kind of similar to schools. They take a while to grow, but once they grow, they will start to reduce the air pollution. They can create a little bit of a buffer. So that's one thing you can do to mitigate pollution before you can afford to do things like, you know, building a water treatment plant or building a, a, a greener power plants or dezoning some of your dirty industry and replacing it with, um, with medium industry. Uh, you can also, and this is a side note, I'm not going to recommend you do this, but you can you can also just tax this, you can tax out dirty industry, you can put this up to 20, and it will kill the demand, but that's something, that's more of an advanced, uh, that's more of an advanced, uh, tutorial 
type tip. Uh, and it also, to be honest, it also it's a very different way of playing the game. I'll talk about that a bit more when we get to uh, regional gameplay. That option, the option of, of you know hiking taxes for certain types of for certain types of sims and jobs. So take a close look at the at the budget, and we can see that we really can't afford more services. We have we've built this row of parks to mi to to mitigate the pollution. Row of really just. This is basically just mowed lawn and trees, right? Uh, we've we've built a school, we built a we built a clinic, we built a police station, we've got a fire station. We've got kind of one of everything. Uh, so how how are we? How can we afford more services? How can we increase the desirability demand for for desirable sims and jobs? Well, we need to res generate more tax revenue. First of all, I'm going to run the clock a bit. If we want to be able to afford more expensive services, we're going to have to generate more tax revenue. And we cannot, we're not going to generate uh, tax revenue by building residential. Uh, the easiest way to generate tax revenue is going to be to build more industry and more commercial eventually. Right? Jobs in general. And the reason for this, the reason for this is that uh, as we discussed in, in earlier on in this video, uh, the most, residential is the most demanding type. Of, of zone, right? It demands all these things. So the best way to increase our tax revenue to make sure that we have a big enough buffer to be offering more services to to be offering more services to our sims is to increase the number of jobs that we're offering. There we go, we're getting, uh, we've gone to a new growth stage, so we're getting bigger factories as well. Right, building more industry We've we've given ourselves a, a substantial a, a substantially bigger buffer, and we've still got a little bit of demand for manufacturing industry. So once we've used up all of the demands for uh, medium, or most of the demand for medium industry, or for industry and uh, jobs, uh, then we can start to look at what our budget is and what services we can provide. So it looks like we can afford to spend more on our sims, but not too much. Once we provide a high school, college, library, we're going to have to expand before we offer them any more. So, so the best thing to do at this point is going to be to build a little bit more residential. As I mentioned in the last video, don't pay attention uh, much to how I'm designing the transportation or how I'm designing this grid. I will be showing you that in the next video, which is on transportation. So I've built a kind of a weird, ugly looking city here, and it's, it's really just to demonstrate the more, basic, uh, the more basic concepts that we're dealing with, with desirability. So don't pay too much attention to, to how this actually looks. So I've expanded the residential area, and I'm also going to provide more service. So we're going to need a second clinic because this clinic is actually over capacity. So let's build a second clinic and we can kind of have it overlap a bit, right? So that's going to provide more health care. We can increase the size of the school, of the primary school. And once again, lower the bus funding probably to the minimum in this case. And we can lower that funding as well. And then we can maybe put in a high school. And then we can delete that small primary school. So we should be able to, in our budget, so we've actually had gone over our budget there by putting those two clinics and just the high school. We're not even going to be able to offer a college or a, or a library. Right, so let's see, let's see how that works though, because this residential area is going to build up. And you can see when we go back to the education graph, you can see that over the last few years, you see how slowly it goes up? It goes up very, very slowly, education. And you can see we're just barely making enough money. Uh, one thing that I can, uh, one thing that's, that you'll notice um, in the, I haven't been paying much attention to the news ticker. By all means, uh, explore the news ticker and, and you can follow some of the things that it says. Some of them are not that useful. Uh, but uh, it says prisoners grant themselves early parole. Uh, that's the thing that happens. As soon as you build your first police station, 
You also need to put down your first jail, or you will be constantly reminded that your, your police stations aren't effective unless there's some kind of jail. So this is a really important tip. Jails, again, treat jails like you treat power plants and like you treat dumps. Put them on the edge of your city. Okay? Now, jails, if, as soon as we build that jail, we are over, over budget, right? That's because jails cost a base of 450. However, you can reduce the slider. So if we look at it, if, we, if it's set like at 450 or so, it has a capacity of, it has 800 jail cells, right? But we don't need 800 jail cells. We, we're not gonna have 800 prisoners. So what you can do is go to your um, public safety department, the Department of Corrections, and you can lower this to the bare minimum. Put it to like 18 or as low as you can get it, right? And then when we press play, we'll see right away, look at that, we have 160 cells just with 18 simoleons of funding, and we're only using 32 of those cells, okay? So that's a good tip. If, uh, to, if you, you need to build a jail to make your police station effective, uh, but you do not need to have a fully funded jail, and that way we can actually turn a profit. So. Basically what you need to do is wait until the education actually until the education uh, actually takes effect, which takes several years. You can keep building your city while you wait for this to go up. You can certainly keep building your city. Uh, and I, like I said, you can I would follow the same principle. It's good to zone employment before residential because they have less demands. So at this point we can see that after about five years of letting the clock run, the education level has risen enough to, so that uh, dirty industry demand is being replaced by manufacturing industry demands. Now, the last thing you want to do is dezone a bunch of this and replace it with, me with uh, medium industry, with manufacturing industry. Uh, you, you can dezone it and rezone it if you like, but uh, we don't have enough money for that. We're not making enough of a profit. so. The, one of the first steps in terms of moving towards um, moving towards better, less damaging industry, less dirty industry for for your employment is going to be probably to make a, a fresh industrial zone. Let's see if we can get so we get those. We can see that this is manufacturing industry. As soon as we use the quarry tool here, okay, and then we go take a look at our our tax our, our tax income and we can see that the manufacturing industry is going to very quickly provide us with a solid income as soon as we get manufacturing industry we also get bigger commercial demand right so those de the, the the demands factors really come into play there We're starting to get some some higher growth stages of commercial like these buildings medium wealth commercial office things like that and that's partly because we're getting manufacturing jobs right so now we're making enough money that if we wanted to actually reduce the uh, the amount of dirty industry, we could do that. We can also expand uh, education and stuff like that. So that pretty much covers off desirability factors. So we see that by satisfying factors of desirability, we increase the population of high wealth types and also create demand for high wealth jobs and vice versa, right? At a certain point, we're gonna hit other bottlenecks though. And we're starting to see some examples of those bottlenecks in this city, where there was some there was some abandonment happening here and stuff. Uh, you're going to hit two other bottlenecks. First of all, you're going to you're going to have traffic jams, and you're going to have uh, demand caps. So once we have a good amount of money, we can start investing in higher capacity transportation, and that's going to be the topic of next video. Uh, we can increase the demand cap for residential by building parks and some some reward buildings commercial services have no demand cap but in order to increase the demand cap for offices and industry we're going to have to look at regional play and building neighbor cities and that's the fourth video in this series we'll cover that topic if you're enjoying these tutorials uh please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel uh, if you're interested in seeing more SimCity content, I am also doing a Let's Play series in the Plantation Bay region where I take a city, I uh, started as a very small agricultural city, and I develop it into a metropolis. So by all means, check out that playlist. 
Uh, and I also wanted to invite you to, if you're, if you're enjoying this tutorial or if you have questions, please ask the questions in the comments. If there's things that you feel like I'm missing or I'm not covering, ask them in the comments. Even if you feel like I'm doing this ass backwards and I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm not giving good advice, you know, put it in the comments. Start a discussion. I think that's part of, part of the reason I'm doing this is, is to stimulate that discussion and to, you know, get people playing the game and learning how to, to, learning new ways to play the game. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.